This is Huawei's new wearable. It is called the Watch GT Runner. Now the GT Runner is very similar to the Watch GT3. They're almost identical, the hardware inside and the system, everything similar, but this watch here is focused on running. So set up for runners. We've got more in software here in the menu through the watch for runners and a lighter weight. This weighs about half that of the metal version of the Watch GT3. It's got 50 meters of water resistance. We still have the very accurate eight photodiode sensor heart rate monitoring, which can be set up to be continually on. We've got the five system GPS dual frequency. That's really accurate too with this. And the other features, well, we've still got a very good stunning display on this, which has a 466 by 466 resolution, AMOLED, very bright, and a fast, fluid UI. And the Huawei Watch GT Runner box. So nice presentation. You'll see that they have it just in there. I've not turned it on yet, just recording this to start with. And in the pouch here in the side, you will find our extras. So it does have a wireless charger, which is in this little bag right here. And I'll just quickly show you that. It's like the other models, so no change to that. Oh, that's our silicon strap. Okay, so that's the first thing. And there is a spare strap there. But it comes, of course, as you can see, with one of them already on it. And here it is, our wireless charger. So opening this up, just give you a quick look. So magnetically, this will clip onto the underside of the watch. And it's using the Qi standard. So you can actually charge it with other chargers out there too. Now, charge time... It does have a 455 milliamp hour battery. It's going to take about three hours or just under. So it is a little slow to charge, but uh, that's what it is with the watches. And here we have some paperwork. So this is a warranty card. Okay. And in here, we then have a quick start guide that is in various different languages. So this watch is a lot lighter than the previous models that I have reviewed and covered in the channel. So the watch GT3, that's the metal version, 112 grams. And you notice that this one is just so much lighter because of its plastic frame around the outside. The watch itself is 38.5 grams and with the strap all up 52 grams. So that's a huge difference there in weight. And when you're running with it, trust me, that makes a big difference there. Here I have the GT runner next to the watch GT3. You can see the difference here in the build quality. So all metal frame on this one, scratch resistant glass. We have the same scratch resistant glass in this. So 46 millimeters is the size of them. The screen is 1.43 inches. The resolution hasn't changed. So basically same hardware as the last gen. So it's 466 pixels by 466, of course, it being round there. And that translates into 326 PPI. So you cannot see the pixels in these screens at all. You'll see as I bring it up close to the camera that it's AMOLED, so those blacks are super deep and the brightness is great. Now I've had a bit of trouble trying to measure it because it's such a small screen with my meter, but it translates into a somewhere around about 500, 400 nits and in direct sunlight you can make this out. Now with my camera you get a bit of banding, but trust me that in person you're not going to see that banding. It's just on the camera it was doing that. Now, compared to the Watch GT, same location. So we do have the crown here that does spin for the UI. You can use that speaker here, and it's just located on the side. So the frame around the outside of this is plastic. That's why it's so much lighter, and I do prefer this. And there are some gaps in it along the top, just giving us a little bit more ventilation. We get extra holes there too with the strap. So these straps, very strong, no problems with them at all. You can give that a real good pull. And I've even snagged other watches of theirs on things and I've never had a problem with them breaking and the most susceptible part with these watches is right here where that joins up. So to remove those straps, you see it's just got little easy clips on either side. And here we have the heart rate sensor. So there's a lot of changes to this from the previous model and that's come through with this too. So that's the eight channel heart rate monitoring. And apparently they've got a 66% reduction in external light here with the new coating on it and it has eight photodiodes within this and two sets of LED rings. So this is why the accuracy, they claim to be as good as one of those belts that you wear around your chest, one of the heart rate monitors, which is quite a claim. But so far in my testing, I have found it to be very accurate compared to my polar strap that I used to use. The left side of it, you'll see that we do have a little hole there. So this is either a microphone because there's a mic built into this. And then with that speaker on the side, you can handle voice calls on us. So haptic feedback motor within it, it's got a lot packed into it, a lot of tech. So GPS tracking, high accuracy, dual 
channel, so dual frequency GPS, five systems. So it's got your GLONASS, GPS, Galileo, a BDS, and then QZSS, which I believe is uh, another Chinese one there. So a lot of satellites that this does see. And later on, I will test it out and I'll let you know the accuracy of that GPS that's built within it. There's a barometer in here and even a skin temperature sensor. So there's a lot going on in this watch for the compact size. Of course, you've got that continual heart rate monitoring, sleep monitoring, and even SPO2 can be monitored with this. And these silicon straps, the buckle is made out of metal, so that's nice and strong. It's not plastic and that shouldn't break. It feels very hard to me, to my hands at least, giving that a bit of a stress. And then just like the other version here, we do have that 50 meters of water resistance. So yes, you can shower with it on, you can swim with it, and it's got a lot of sports tracking features. So when you take a look at the screens here, what is the difference between both of these? Well, it's the UI, even though they're all powered by the same chipset, they've all got four gigabytes of RAM stored on them. It is very fluid and no lag with this, okay, on both of them. But you see, this is geared up towards runners. That's what it's about. So this is the difference between them with the software, because you see when you swipe here, to the left, you get straight away our heart rate monitoring, okay, then you get our blood saturation levels, and it goes into the other sports modes there, and then the weather. Whereas with this one, with the GT Runner, you see now, especially this is the stock, the main watch face here, I really do like it, it presents everything there. So we've got our barometer there, the altitude, and you can see a lot of the fitness orientated stuff there, weather there too. So when you start to swipe, you go into this information that you can take a quick look through. So your recovery with your run. So I've gone for a run with this and it's telling me my recovery time is going to be, I think it was about 64 hours from my 4K run. And you're able to scroll, scroll through this. So VO2 max, this is a little bit low for some reason. It should be a bit better, but um, I just had my booster and I wasn't in the peak kind of fitness. And you can see more information on that half marathon. It's worked out. So they've got um, a running assistant on this and everything the predicted times there, pretty bad. I'm a little bit slow there. I haven't been running for a while. So all that information's built in there. Training load too as well. So that's from the, again, from the run there today. So going back just into the main menu and go past those again, you'll see the training plan is in there. So this is where it's all different. My running ability. So it's telling me that my running ability is higher than 67.9% of my peers. Oh, well, that's pretty good and a B level. Honestly, I would say it was a C level at the moment. Anyway, heart rate monitor, you can see that there is as well then, and the resting heart rate or recovery heart rate there too that's coming through. No, that's the resting there, sorry. And then a weather, which you can go into and see a lot of detail about that too. So if I click on here, the weather, I can get a lot more information on it. It's telling me a few days there what it's going to be like for our weather, and you can go through that. Even tells you the sunset, sunrise, moon too, and the moon phase. So a lot of information. Oh, and even the tides. I forgot about that one. So there's a lot packed into it. And then of course, you have all your different apps. And of course, you've got notifications with this. Now, the good thing with their app support now is you can actually answer WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages, and I think it's Telegram, another one on the watch itself. So that is great. Answer your calls on it. And it does have that flick to wake. So if the screen's off, and then you were to just, I've got it on the timer at the moment, so I can turn it off. So if you flick your wrist, once it times out, you flick it around, that will then bring it on automatically. So all that's there, it's got the built-in sensors for that, the accelerometer. So the screen response is very good. I've had no problems with the touch. It does not lag at all. Performance with Harmony OS with this particular watch is working great. Now it does support Android and also iOS. So you don't have to have a Huawei watch or anything like that, but it works with Huawei Health. I'll get onto that app soon. So swiping down from the top, you can go into some more little settings right there. Drain, that's to drain out the speaker. It makes that noise. Try and pump out a bit of water when it fills in there when you've been swimming. Do not disturb, alarm, pretty straightforward. And then our settings, just go through that very quickly. There's a lot of things you can do in here. Um, I won't go through most of them there, but you can do your update system there. And also you can connect up with Bluetooth. You're able to connect up all sorts of other tech with this. So you can select the type. You've got headphones, heart rate sensors that does support and other meters there. So there's a lot going on there. Now with the control straightforward top button is to get into your different apps and you can go through and scroll through all of them there. Okay, you can see there's a lot in there. Health, stress, breathing exercises, call log, contacts, music, remote shutter, barometer, compass notification, weather, wallet, and it has NFC built into it. Stopwatch, timer, alarm, torch, find phone settings, 
and even maps. Now you can load more apps onto this with the application. Now the bottom one, you can change this button here to designate it to whatever you want, but normally it's the workout mode. So just tapping that, you go into all our workouts. So it's not just for runners, okay? You've got courses and well for the running there, but when you go through it, you see outdoor running, walking, indoor cycling, pool. There's a huge list and you can add more to it. So this goes on and on. A hundred different modes that can be tracked workout settings that you can go through too. Okay, when it broadcasts it with the voice, you can set all of that up and the volume of it. And I'll give you a sample of that, of that later on too. Now swiping from the left to the right here, that's to go back there. You can see it always on display, but that really does kill our battery life, so I won't be doing that. Or to detect workouts, I haven't bothered with that one. So there's huge amounts of customization you can do with this. And then the notifications, if you swipe up, you can see them come through there, okay? This is telling me about that exercise I did. Watch faces, there are plenty of them you can download, but I do like this, the default one, which is called Data Pack. There's customization that you can set up with it, do all sorts of things. So you see, we've got a lot of them that are the standard ones I've seen before with the Watch GT3. And as mentioned, you can download and get a whole lot of them, different ones there. And some of them can be very vibrant, stands out. And again, this screen is stunning for a watch. I really do like it. It's bright and it's clear and it's AMOLED. And that 326 PPI means that you just don't see any pixels. So I'll put it back on the default, which is my preferred one so far with this watch. Now it's time to test out the GT Runner's performance here. So what I'm going to do is go for a run along the coast here. Approximately three kilometers. I think that's all I can do because I haven't been running now for about three weeks. Last time was in New Zealand. I'll see how it performs. I'm going to have a look at the stats that it does give me, my heart rate, and then the distance and everything. I'll show you then with the application, the map, and how it has tracked it all with its dual frequency GPS that it has. And with the plastic body of this GT Runner now, it should actually get really good signal strength and should be very accurate. Okay, so I made it halfway now with my run. Watch has been really good, tracking everything. Heart rate up to 171. And it's giving me those feedbacks. I'll give you a sample of the voice feedback. This is what it sounds like. One kilometer pace is six minutes and 30 seconds. Your current heart rate is 173. Okay, so I managed to do four kilometers and it probably wasn't a good idea just after my booster shot which i got yesterday not quite feeling 100 percent anyway let's take a look at the results of my four kilometer run this is in the app which i'll show you more about the app just after this so 4.05 kilometers was my distance that i managed to run there so i did a bit of a, a, a loop around the the coast here and went back of course now the gps accuracy looks very very good as I stated before, that it's got that dual frequency GPS 5 systems, and you normally only see that in flagships like this, but it's in the watch itself, which is great to have. And going along here, you see that's followed all along the coast where I was running, and then back again. Great. I've got no complaints about that. I do think it's quite accurate. So here with the running, you can see my pace. It's broken down into the fastest pace was only, oh, okay, 6.3 uh, per kilometer, minutes per kilometer there. Not amazing. Um, and then the segments too can be broken down. Uh, and you see all that information there, the total time there. Chart, so able to view the chart of my heart here. I did push it quite hard and got my heart up to 182 maximum, which uh, when I really start to, to sprint, I was doing some little sprints at some areas. Uh, that makes sense. That's, that's what I've seen before with my polar chested uh, heart monitor that I do have that I don't use anymore because these watches are just good enough, I feel and more details on that too. You can see the descent, elevation, steps, average heart rate, average stride speed. There's a lot of information. When you scroll down, you can then see the performance. So anaerobic training stress has improved. And you can see my VO2 max, which yeah, it's not actually that good. And finally, recovery time there at the bottom, that 69 hours that I should be fully recovered from this run and ready to go on Saturday. Now application. So this is the P50 Pro. I have a review of that in my channel too, if you're interested in that. That's the new flagship. So the app we want is Health. Now this works on any Android phone. You don't have to have a Huawei phone at all for it. And it even does work on iPhone. If you have an iPhone, it's going to be working on that too, Health. So once you get into it, there's a lot we can go through here 
to set it up. And you have to add your personal details and things like that, which I've done most of that. So there's a lot in this. This really has not changed. It's just and just been improving over the last couple of years with it since I've been using it. And I've been very happy with it. So you can see the heart rate monitor. You can take a look at that over the various different days, the months. you got it all broken down there. I get into the sleep tracking. So you take a look at this and you can see that, uh, well, last night I slept only 5 hours and 20 minutes. But uh, such as life with tech reviewers, you've got four or three embargoed things due on Friday. So yeah, you get the idea. You've got to burn the midnight oil. Woke up at eight o'clock and that's pretty accurate because eight is exactly where my alarm went off and that's when I jumped up out of bed. So we'll rate that. You can see that the different phases of my sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, sleep, and then rapid eye movement stage sleep there too as well. And it will rate it too. So my rating there is 73 points, which is not brilliant. Um, and it even lists when you got up. Oh, okay, wake one time. Yeah, I think I woke up in the middle of the night, as you do, of course. So that's all there. Now, skin temperature, this one, you have to be wearing the watch for quite a long time to make this accurate. You can see right now, if my skin temperature was 25.9 degrees, I'd have some health issues. There'd be something definitely wrong with me. Now, the reason is because I've been taking this watch off a lot, shooting a bit of B-roll, testing it out, recording this kind of footage with you now. So that's why. Stress rating, so you can fill that in and it will give you a stress rating, how you've been over time. You can check that out, which is good. And you've even got healthy living in here and all the exercises can be done. Up the top here, it's told me the time I've been training. So 30 minutes, and I've done 7,853 steps, 7 kilometers, 7.29 kilometers, and burnt 512 calories there. This is the watch, I believe, for runners. If you're training for a marathon, if you run a lot, the extra screens we get, the extra info, this is great. This is the best thing about it is not actually that, is the weight too. So the difference in weight is about half compared to the steel frame, the steel strap I've got with my watch GT3. You notice that difference. You may think, oh yeah, 50 grams on your wrist is gonna mean nothing. But when, trust me, when you're running big distances too, you are going to notice that weight. So it's really good to see. Now, even though it's all geared up towards runners out there, it is still for people that do your general sports. We've still got all those typical trackings on there, tra sports tracking. So we've got 100 different modes. So anywhere from mountain climbing to mountain biking to swimming, skiing, it is on this watch here. And they do a good job, I think, of tracking that. Speaking of which, when I looked at the GPS, that information I showed you from my short four kilometer run, it looks very accurate to me. It followed me around the coast really great. So it's got accurate GPS, heart rate monitoring, they claim is as accurate as those chest straps. Now I do have one of those polar chest straps and this watch is almost identical, very, very close there. It's only out by sometimes about five or so beats per minute, which is really nothing. So they've, I think they've nailed it with this. If you're a runner, this is probably the watch to get. Now, what are the things I don't like about it? Well, very little. I mean, the battery life is amazing. Some of the other brands out there are then to go for two or three days, right? And you have to charge them, but this thing just goes and goes and goes. So battery life definitely is not a con. It's one of the big positives too. I don't like the charge time. I think three hours is a little too slow. I hope with the next models, they can up that a little bit. Now, I, I know it's not really a problem, right? You just charge this at night. When it's getting a little bit low, you see you're better at 20% or 15%, which is still last another whole day for me at 10% even. Put it on a charge when you go to bed and you wake up, it's fully charged. So really not a big issue there. The other is the third party app support. So we can now answer like WhatsApp alerts when you get them through notifications, you can answer some of them on the watch, which a lot of people have been asking for, which is great. Uh, Telegram and Facebook Messenger, I think is another one too that's supported there, but we still don't have a huge range of third party app support with this. It's not a Wear OS watch either. If you needed that, no. If you've got your Wear OS apps, your banking apps to put it onto a watch like this, sadly, that's one area that definitely it does fall short there, but very few cons. I think this is a fantastic watch and not just for runners too. But if you're interested, make sure you do check out my review of the Watch GT3 if you want something that a little bit more premium with the metal around it, but a little heavier, of course. It really is it's the same kind of watch here, but this being the runner focused of the watches. So thanks a lot for watching my Watch GT runner review, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.